I was contacted by AK Interactive a few months back, and they wanted to know if I was willing to test out the new paint line. The AK Dual Evo, sorry, the AK Dual XO paints. The concept behind them is to remove the guesswork when it comes to getting the correct color tones between a darker and lighter tone, something I have spent years on now. The principle behind the paint line is the same as my approach to painting model kits in general. You have your darker base layer, and then you move up in color. It's pretty standard fare for all miniature painting, really. However, I've spent years and I'm comfortable with most of the paints that I have that are my go-to paints for certain colors. And personally, I can see this as being a great line for someone that's just starting out and is kind of confused with getting their tones correct. It's a lot of guesswork when you're not really well versed in colors. If you didn't go to art school and you haven't memorized the color theory wheel backwards and forwards, this paint may just be for you. Full disclosure, I am a lacquer painter through and through. So airbrushing with acrylics threw me off for about an hour or two. But after I got the feel for the paint, everything started flowing. You see what I did there? Originally, I was going to paint a female figure, Asuka from uh, Evangelion. Or is it Evangelion? But for some reason, I got out the Gundam Aerial HG that I've been sitting on for months and figured, why not? I went with the standard Gundam colors because I don't have the entire range at my fingertips. They only sent stuff that was basically geared towards mecha painting. The principle is simple here. We go from darker to lighter or from lighter to darker, depending on how you like to shade things. The description reads that dual XL paints are an acrylic polymer that is ultra resistant and can bond with many surfaces and it can be used without the need for priming. So I put that to the test. FYI, I always fully endorse priming your kits that you're working on. And normally I would prime a kit, but let's see what this non-primer stuff can do. This paint is an odd beast that I think would be great for miniatures. It also needs to be thin just right or else you have a mountain of issues. You know, clogged airbrush, obviously, and paint that's too thin leads to bad results. Some colors work better than others in a line, by the way. The robot white that leads into the extreme white gives a pretty good color transition from lights to darks when it comes to the color white. The dirty red into supernova leaves something to be desired. In fact, I would dare say that you might want to go supernova first and then sort of use the dirty red after to sort of get the darker tones you want because the supernova red over the dirty red doesn't really show how bright the supernova red is. It's just there and it just blends too well into the darker red. But since I had limited time, I wanted to test the paints as is out of the box with little to no alteration from me. The standout color in this line so far, or at least in what I was sent, is the faded orange in the pure orange. When blended into a yellow to make a yellow orange, it is a very bright and vibrant color. Everything just works here and has a beautiful tone. By the way, I recommend Iowata's airbrush cleaner when you're flushing colors. This stuff works the best. All my other acrylic based thinners and cleaners, it just didn't jive for some reason. As far as durability will go, I will say that if you mix the paints correctly and allow them to dry adequately, you can get away with not using a primer. But then again, I also sealed the paints in Mr. Hobby Clear Colors. With any area that has excessive rubbing, the paint will come off and reveal the original bare plastic. So if you are rough with your kits, expect to see scratches and paint peel off. A prime kit would obviously be more durable, but for miniatures or a kit that you wouldn't fiddle with, you may be fine. For hand painting, the self-leveling paint is pretty sweet. There is a bit of a finesse to painting with a brush. When you have the brush stroke just right with this paint, it looks great. Like you probably couldn't tell that it wasn't airbrushed in small areas. But when you just stroke this paint wrong, it looks terrible. But I guess it could be said about any hand brush paints. So keep that in mind. But so far, I was really impressed with how the blue went on. I would probably say that the darker colors like blue, red, and such black but they didn't send me a black those colors you could probably get what you want in about 
two or three shades. Obviously for white, it takes multiple coats and you have to have beautiful brush strokes or else it'll be clearly visible. Flat top coat will most likely hide this unless you do a very bad job, but you know, nobody has time for all that explanation. The fact that there is a dark tone and a lighter tone for each paint really removes the guesswork when it comes to blending colors. So that is an added bonus I think would be great for newcomers to painting. Since these are acrylics, you can also use them without fear of getting sick or needing to wear heavy duty face gear like I do. That comes with the territory of harsher paints like lacquers. You know what they say, if you could smell a lacquer, you'd probably kill the brain cell. Keep that in mind. So if you're sharing space with other people, maybe small pets, and you don't have a lot of room to get away, this may be the paint to go with for you. As far as airbrushing acrylics go, I will say that this is easily the best acrylic paint I've used thus far when it comes to airbrushing. For someone unable to work with harsher paint brands, you might want to check out the Evo paint line. They have 42 colors and cover a lot of bases, even for dioramas. It's two colors per pack and they run about 10 USD. And admittedly, this is more paint than you'll get from the lacquer jars I buy. So it's also decent bang for your buck if you're starting out. Trust me, getting born paint is very pricey and you get so much less in one jar of born paint. Another perfect example, but this is a bit of an extreme, is a guy in notes um, silver plate or chrome. I believe they're like $30 a bottle. You don't get as much paint as you get here. But then again, those are specialty paints. So that's a bit of an extreme case. Sorry for the overall finished shots of the Gundam Ariel. I broke the kid's arm and by the time I was filming it, I was already just fed up with uh, the process of trying to fix the broken arm. I'll just have to buy another kit and replace the one piece that broke. But hopefully you get a good idea of color tones from looking at this. Also keep in mind, I painted this kit within a day. So I rushed it. So odds are if you're spending time normally painting a kit with care and paying attention to the tiny details you want to come out, your work will look better. Just something to keep in mind. And I just, uh, I was going through the motions as quickly as possible. But if you look at it from what we've got here, it's not bad. I'd say that this is a good paint and I would recommend it to anyone that doesn't want to work with lacquers or can't work with lacquers for any reasons. This might be a good line to start with. Very simple, straightforward, and it gives you a basic idea. It's kind of like training. I'm not quite sure when these will be offered in America because AK paints are from Spain, but I'm sure you'll be able to find them at some relative point soon. All right, this part is unscripted because I completely forgot and I was unfortunately tired. I also used the AK paints on this skull here. I went from the grays of the mobile suit to the extreme white and robot white on this skull head. And as you can see, it actually looks pretty cool. Granted, I would have normally gone with more sort of skull tones, a bit more tan or something. And in a world where I had more free time at my disposal, I would have probably mixed colors until I got that. But nonetheless, the overall finished piece looks pretty good. To be fair, I also put some washes on top of it to really bring out some details. You get the idea that this paint covers a lot of bases. And remember, I'm using a limited amount of paints geared towards mobile suits. I also put some gold in the teeth. That's as well AK paints. By the way, AK paints when it comes to metallics with acrylics, fantastic actually. Genuinely fantastic. Like I'm being real with you, AK paints acrylics when it comes to metallics, they don't separate or get all congealy or whatnot. Whereas to like, let's say Vallejo or something, you put it on there and it just sort of runs or the metallic pigment just goes all over the place. So AK has definitely got that going for them. In fact, it's so popular. If you look it up on YouTube, you'll find a lot of miniature painters also are really switching to AK when it comes to that. You know, something to keep in mind. If you hand paint or do miniatures, Warhammer, desktop, tabletop games, you get the point. Now I'm out of here. And as the man who gave me my first airbrush once said, do great things.